Look at that power! I didn't even spot it! I'll show the surprising ways animals use bulk to survive. And stepping back in time, I'll also meet the prehistoric monsters that once roamed the Earth. Today, many of our big animals are in trouble. From plastics in our oceans to climate change, it's often the biggest creatures that are hardest hit. In this episode, I'm in the Americas. From the forests of Alaska to the coasts of Patagonia. I'm gonna get up close to the continent's Goliaths and discover the crucial roles they play in maintaining the health of our planet. Prepare to meet the big beasts, the last of the giants. of Montana, USA. Home to one of North America's biggest land predators. The grizzly. Males stand up to three meters tall and can use their muscle power to take down prey as big as bison. But that's not the only reason these brown bears need to be so big. To find out why they've become supersized, I'm going to get as close as I dare. Now that is a big, big bear. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, he's coming up to me. Wow. He's just extraordinary. Look at those huge canines. get so close is because this bear was rescued as a cub and raised by humans. But now he's a fully grown 16 year old male in his prime. I mean it's only when you get this close that you understand the magnitude and size of these grizzly bears. weighs over half a ton, and that's pure muscle. Look at those claws, they're huge. They can have claws up to eight centimeters long. And those shoulder muscles mean that grizzly bears have some of the most powerful front limbs of any animal on the planet. They use that strength to excavate their winter dens. This is great, so I can actually see him putting those muscles and those front limbs to good use. Grizzly bears will move about a ton of earth to make their dens. Brown bears spend up to seven of the coldest months in hibernation. 
relying on their fat reserves, they can lose a third of their body weight. Only by bulking up can they survive the bitterly cold winter. That's why grizzlies get so huge. But what makes these giants truly astounding is the impact their size is having on the world around them. And the best place to see this is Alaska. Home to the largest population of wild grizzlies on Earth. These coastal bears are at their thinnest after a winter in their dens. With food scarce, tempers flare. But every year, nature lays on an incredible feast for all. Each summer, hundreds of millions of ocean-living salmon surge up these glacial rivers to spawn in the gravel beds where they themselves were born. It's an extraordinary mass migration. And for the bears, a calorie-rich superhighway. Despite their bulk, grizzlies have a surprising turn of speed. Muscular limbs make them quick off the mark. They can reach 65 kilometers an hour. Driven by an insatiable biological desire to eat, known as hyperphagia. They can catch as many as 30 salmon a day. In six months, they can gain up to 180 kilos as they prepare for another winter in hibernation. The leftovers from this feast make for rich pickings. But surprisingly, it's not just animals that benefit. Salmon contain ocean-born nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus that are crucial to the life cycle of trees and plants. When they fish these rivers on such a scale, and when they do what bears do in the woods, these grizzlies fertilize the forests around them. By bringing this salmon that they eat up from the sea to the land, bears are responsible for nearly a quarter of all the nitrogen in the surrounding forests. Because of their big appetites, grizzlies are monster muck spreaders that fertilize the soil and enrich their ecosystem. But worryingly, outside of Alaska, 
Only 1,500 grizzlies remain. Throughout history, big animals like bears have often struggled to adapt to changing conditions. Two million years ago, a much larger ancestor of the grizzly reigned throughout the Americas. The giant, short-faced bear. Weighing in at 1,600 kilos, it was a powerful meat eater. But when leaner, meaner predators evolved, its size was no longer an advantage, and this gigantic bear disappeared from our world. Remaining Alaskan grizzlies are having such a profound impact that they continue to feed part of the largest temperate rainforest in the world. But another North American giant is shaping its landscape in an even more remarkable way. This top predator benefits the animals around it, and by doing so, is even changing the course of rivers. The gray wolf. Standing up to a meter tall, they are the largest and heaviest of all the wild canines. Hunting in packs and reaching speeds of up to 70 kilometers an hour, these apex predators can bring down prey up to 10 times their size. The spoils from their kills provide food for ravens, coyotes, and even bears. But by the 1930s, in Yellowstone National Park, this keystone species had been hunted to extinction. The gray wolf was in danger of going the way of its much larger ancestor. A legendary beast that has been lost forever. The dire wolf once stalked the earth alongside early humans. More than 25% bigger than the grey wolf, its stronger jaws and bigger teeth suggest it was able to crack the bones of prey like bison. For over 200,000 years, the dire wolf reigned across the Americas until it died out. 10,000 years ago. But the fortunes of the Grey Wolf, once lost to Yellowstone, were about to change. In the mid-1990s, 31 Grey Wolves were introduced back into this landscape and surprising benefits began to cascade through the ecosystem. Ah! 
willow that had been overgrazed by elk grew back, allowing beavers to make more dams. This created pools and changed the flow of rivers, which encouraged fish, insect, and bird numbers to soar. Now, the wolf population has increased from 31 to over 500 in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. This wilderness continues to be shaped by the astonishing power of big predators. My journey through the Americas now takes me to the Caribbean and the deep waters off the coast of Dominica. There's a giant here whose huge size is helping to maintain the health of our oceans. The creature I'm on the lookout for is a true sea monster. A real life Moby Dick that can grow to the size of a double decker bus. The sperm whale. They're the largest of all the toothed predators. With the biggest brains in the animal kingdom. These deep sea specialists spend most of their lives hunting squid in the abyss. Tracking sperm whales is a challenge. But fortunately, they hold another record. They're also the loudest animals on the planet. They make booming clicks, powerful shock waves that can be heard up to 10 kilometers away. Self-styled well whisperer Andrew Armour is helping me pinpoint them using an underwater microphone. So we stick this in the water and we spin it around. And wherever we get the sounds the loudest is where the waves are coming from. Your job now is to listen to the clicks. All right, let's give it a go. Let's see if this thing works. Like an underwater Morse code, whales communicate using patterns of clicks known as coders. Talk to me. It's a click, 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 click. Listen to it. Yeah, there we go. Click, 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 click. You got it. That's the Caribbean coders. We know these are Caribbean whales from that sound. So this coder, this pattern of sounds and clicks that they're making, that's specific, that's unique to Caribbean sperm whales. Yes. So we know they're homeboys. That's where the whales are. So we're going to crank up and get out of here. Let's go find the whales, Patrick. Sperm whales are found in all the oceans of the world. And new research suggests that each population has its own dialect. When it comes to understanding these intelligent creatures, we're only just scratching the surface. We're on the surface! There she goes again! Okay, buddy! Four for the ants! Between dives, sperm whales rest for up to 10 minutes. They take around 50 breaths to fully reoxygenate their blood, which gives them more time to hunt for food. 
That is why size is key to the sperm whale's success. Oh, wow. That is one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in my life. I was trying my best to keep up with her, but she was motoring along. And with just one flick of her tail, she dove deep into the abyss. Sperm whales can reach depths of over two kilometers and can stay beneath the surface for up to 80 minutes. They are the ultimate free diving champions of the natural world. Amazing. Oh. Long dives mean they can satisfy huge appetites. Each day, adults eat up to a ton of fish and squid. Globally, it's been shown that sperm whales are taking the same amount of fish from our oceans as all the world's fisheries. But what makes them so important for us all is what they do when they surface from this feast. I noticed that there was a brown mist that came out of the end. I think I have an idea of what it was. <laughs> well, that's a poop. <laughs> you see a cloud, and that's the punami. That's what this program is all about. Sperm whale feces is full of iron and nitrogen. Once deposited at the surface, it feeds great blooms of plant plankton. When these microscopic plants photosynthesize, they remove harmful carbon dioxide from our atmosphere and sink it to the safety of the ocean floor. Latest science shows that sperm whales are responsible for a 200,000 ton carbon dump in the Southern Ocean alone, with extraordinary benefits to our planet. Now we must continue to protect these big beasts and allow them to do what they do best. Diving into the deep and returning to the surface with nutrients that refeed the ocean and play a vital role in the battle against climate change. For 300 years, we hunted sperm whales, slashing their numbers by two thirds. Now are we beginning to understand the amazing ways that some of our biggest beasts are helping to protect us all. My journey now takes me south to a remote corner of Brazil. This 150,000 square kilometer wetland and surrounding plateau harbors some seriously supersized animals. The biggest cat in the Americas, the floodplain jaguar grows twice as big as others on the continent. On the riverbanks, capybara, the world's largest rodents, prolific grazers that are top of the menu for the gargantuan beast I want to track down. This reptile can grow to become as long as a bus and as wide as a 30 centimeter ruler. 
I'm on the search for the biggest snake in the world, the green anaconda. The Bodocana Plateau is one of the last remaining strongholds for this giant ambush predator. Adult females are the largest, weighing up to a quarter of a ton. Known to live for up to 30 years, they never stop growing, regularly shedding their skin to accommodate an ever burgeoning body. I'm joining a team of experts to find out why the green anaconda is so vital to the future of this unique wilderness. As we venture upriver, we encounter other giants. Can you hear that? That is the sound of giant river otters. They are really elusive. Oh, river otters. <gasps> there are only 5,000 giant otters left in the world. Most of them are here. This is a real treat. Nearly two meters from head to tail, they are voracious hunters. Waterways team with over 300 different species of fish. Giant otters keep their numbers in check and allow the nutrient rich rivers to sustain a huge diversity of life. This is really exciting because if we've got giant river otters here, that means that this entire ecosystem is really, really fertile. In this largely untouched wilderness, where all species can thrive and all of life is connected, big predators are vital for keeping things in balance. Up river on the plateau, we're closing in on the green anaconda. The team have fitted a few of these giant snakes with radio tags. We're tracking them down to monitor their breeding success. This female is about five meters long. And she's not alone. This is just incredible behavior. Uh, I don't want to disturb this female because right now she is in a breeding bull. There are about three or four males coiled around her body. Each dry season, up to 13 males will compete to mate with one much larger female.
with tiny spur-like limbs, a relic from their ancient lizard ancestors. Males vie for her attention and coax her into a position to mate. She's just tasting the air. That forked tongue is picking up all the scent molecules. And so she must be aware of our presence. And she's just writhing back and forward. To give her the best chance of mating successfully, we move on. Further upstream, the team get a signal from another female they witnessed in a breeding bull several weeks ago. I think she's in that direction. Yeah, we're getting closer to her. I can't see her anywhere up on the bank, which is where I'd expect her to be. So where about she, Juliana? We can't see her in the river bank, so she's probably under the water. She's in the water. To see if she's pregnant, there's no choice but to get in. Huge female is at least seven meters long. That snake is massive. And you know what? I think she looks even bigger than normal. What I thought was a tree trunk was the body of this snake. I can clearly see a huge bulge, which means that she's pregnant. The largest can give birth to up to 50 live young. A new generation of big predators bodes well for the future of this delicately balanced ecosystem. That is an incredible beast. Today, the green anaconda is the heaviest snake in the world. But 60 million years ago, far bigger serpents ruled the Americas. Fossils were found in a Colombian mine of a snake that stretched almost one and a half times the length of a London bus. The Titanoboa weighed over a ton and grew up to a metre wide. But it's thought these cold-blooded giants failed to adapt to an abrupt change in temperature and died out forever. The lush waterways of Brazil remain a haven for over 4,000 plant and animal species. The delicate balance of life is maintained by top predators keeping prey populations in check. For now at least, the big beasts of Brazil can still act as guardians of their rich and fragile realm.
On my journey through the Americas, I've seen how giants are vital for our planet. But we're living through a period of unrivaled change. And history tells us that during these times, the biggest animals are often the first to disappear. Until recently, South America was home to a whole host of colossal creatures. Flightless terror birds towered three meters tall. Their long beaks could shatter bone. The glyptodon was a giant armadillo that grew to the size of a car. And huge ground sloths loomed as tall as giraffes. But around 11,000 years ago, these lumbering giants were unable to adapt to a shift in climate and were all driven to extinction. Today, the biggest, heaviest creatures left on the continent are found on the beaches of Argentina. But what makes them extraordinary is how they're working alongside us in the race to understand our changing planet. Each spring draws huge gatherings of the most bizarre of beasts. the southern elephant seal. It's pupping season. Females return to land to give birth and nurse their young. In just three weeks, they'll have them weaned and be ready to breed again with the dominant male. Known as the beach master, this male has established a harem of over 90 females. four-ton torpedo of blubber. He can be up to 10 times the size of the females. To ensure his lineage, he must guard them from rival bulls. The beach master uses his bulk to scare off smaller intruders. warning calls that reach 120 decibels. But sometimes he faces a far bigger challenge. An equally huge bull willing to take him on. on this beach will ever secure the chance to mate. The stakes 
couldn't be higher. take over the harem and give rise to a new generation of giants. In a few weeks, the breeding season will be over and the whole colony will head back out to sea. It's in the largely unexplored Southern Ocean that these big beasts are using their size to join us in a very different fight.